My man. What up? You're here. <laughs> How are you? Good. It took me a while to get my man. The, the myth, the legend, the solar dawn, solar con dawn. That was your nickname and I like it. J Cats. <laughs> it's the best nickname ever. The dawn. Well, because you know, you're very unassuming. I, what does that mean? Like people wouldn't know. You know? Oh. I like that. You're not out flashing it. You're not out like I'm the baller that created the solar world or anything. But. <laughs> I uh, I don't know. I feel like I I kind of like to do things and and then kind of stay behind the scenes and lock myself in a room and watch Netflix all day. I love that. I just I just like to create stuff. Yeah. Get it started. So um, for a lot of people that don't know you, give us a little intro. Who are you? Where are you from? Etc. So my name is Jay Kess. I lived in Utah for quite some time, just like most salespeople do, right? Um, and ended up moving to Dallas for about six years. And uh, actually, I'll back it up a little bit. I was in Utah, moved to Washington State. My dad lived out there. My parents were separated. Then I moved to Dallas and then to San Diego. So uh, you, how old were you moved to San Diego? Ooh, I was 29. Oh, okay. Yeah. So where'd you start door to door? I started in Detroit, Michigan in 2005. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, I was in Detroit. Selling alarms or? Home security. Yeah, yeah, of course they need it there. <laughs> it's probably an easy sale. My buddy Ben, he, he came back from the summer. Like it was me and these three guys that like we were just inseparable, right? And Ben Mack was one of them. Oh, he shout left out us ben for Mack. the summer. Yeah. Shout out Ben Mack. He left us for the summer and we thought, what a freaking trader. Like who leaves this group? And, and just abandons us. We felt abandoned. He came back with all of this money. And back then he made $40,000 in a summer. We were like, no way. I don't know what that translates to today. What is that? Like 2.6 million? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, at that age, yeah. You yeah. Felt that way. <laughs> no way you made 40 grand. <laughs> but I was skeptical. I was like, Ben, if you made $40,000, why is your windshield cracked on your truck? <laughs> Like anybody that makes $40,000 does not have a cracked windshield. Wow. And he got up right then, got in his truck and went and changed it. I was like, you did make $40,000. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> call me out, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> but he convinced me, uh, we sat down at a Quiznos and he was like, hey, we wanted to talk to you about something. It's me and this group of friends. We wanted to talk to you about something serious. And I'm like, okay, well, what is it? He's like, well, we're all going to go to Detroit and we're all going to go sell. I'm like, no. And he was like, yeah, uh, but we want you to come with us. Okay, cool. Yeah. When do we leave? He's like, well, do you want to know what we're doing? And I'm like, well, I don't know. What are we doing? Or we're going to knock doors and sell security. I'm like, cool. When do we leave? <laughs> like, that's how I got recruited. And uh, I went out there and changed my life. For the first three months, I only sold 12 accounts total. I was working every day. I didn't even know people skipped knocking doors at that time. I thought everyone just knocked doors. So going to the movies and all that stuff, no one did that in my mind. And then, you know, I find out later that people were skipping. I'm like, why didn't you guys invite me? Like, what the hell? Like, well, you've only sold 12, dude. You're broke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. Okay, so um, that, but the last month I went to, they shut Detroit down. And on that fourth month, we went to Des Moines, Iowa and met up with a guy, John Morris, Zach Hillstead, and these guys in, in Des Moines, Iowa. And all of a sudden I went from 12 accounts. I ended up selling like 64 accounts that month, installed and everything, no cancels, and ended up making the Vivint, or it was Apex at the time, letter, a newsletter. And was it Apex or was it Apex? Apex, yeah. And that's when I stayed in sales. So how old were you then when you started first summer? I was 21, 22, 21, 22. 22. Wow. And then how'd you meet Ben McElroy? It's like cruising, surfing, what? I used to work at the Olive Garden before I knocked doors. <laughs> and in that core group of friends, there's this guy named Jason. He, I, they actually are from Las Vegas, uh, where we're at right now, for those watching. Um, but he was working at Olive Garden with me, and he introduced me to Ben and the crew. And Ben was here? or No, they had been, they moved there for college. So they were out there for college. I just met him in Utah. Holy smokes. <laughs> yeah. so, so, you know, uh, that you, you read a summer, and then how many more summers of alarms? 
never stopped. I'm still, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2013, I had my, I had my fill or it was the end of 2012, 2013 is uh, January 1st is when I went to solar. I, I remember it was New Year's Eve. I was like, I'm gonna start a new year doing a new thing because when you get into the door knocking like home security style or for some, for some people, maybe even solar because home security is not as prevalent anymore. But back then home security was just what you did if you sold yeah. and, and it was really difficult to get out of. I tried to, and many of you probably did try as well uh, to get out of home security, but I just couldn't, I couldn't say no to the money. Right. So I just couldn't get out of it no matter what I recruited tons of people. And then eventually in 2012, I was like, I'm done. I just hit my, I hit a wall. I was like, I was just mentally done. No motivational books, none of the, hey, we all go through slumps. You got to pull yourself out, grind through it. You know, that was all gone. I just needed a change. And so 2013 is when I started solar. Wow. So, okay. They didn't give you like any leadership training. They weren't like, hey, recruit a team. They weren't like, none of that. I mean, I had a couple of teams recruited at Vivint and, you know, I, I had equity over there. I had residual income. And they said, if you, if you leave your teams here at Vivint, then go to Vivint Solar, then you get a dip into two different equity pools and we'll give you the residuals from security. And I thought, okay, absolutely, let's do it. Where do you want to go? Would, do you want to go to Albuquerque, New Mexico, or do you want to go to San Diego? And I was like, uh, San Diego? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I get a pick. Yeah, I don't want to go to Breaking Bad Land. <laughs> I can't remember. It was something crazy like Albuquerque or North Dakota. I can't remember. It was some, it was some state where, but San Diego is an option? Are you kidding me? So I picked San Diego. Ben Mack was there, right? And I'm like, I know Ben. My buddy Alex was there. It's the beach. And I'm like, of course I'm going to go to San Diego. I tried wow. to keep a straight face, but I was smiling. I yeah. was pretty stoked. Um, yeah. And then, so when, when that, and that January 2013, when you went to solar, was it with the SLR or was it your, what did you do? Yeah. So 2013 went to Vivint Solar, ended up recruiting about 36 sales reps into that office and they didn't make me a manager. And the rules were, if you have X amount of recruits doing X amount of volume, then you become a manager. But they had this thing called LTIP, right? Uh, their, their equity pool that they were giving out. And they wouldn't promote me to management because we were about to sell to Sun Edison. It was, it was Sun Ed, right? Sun Edison? Yeah. And, and so they wouldn't promote me because then I would dilute that equity pool uh, if they bumped me up. So they were holding on, holding on, holding on. And then that deal fell through. You know, they were like, oh, we went and got a loan from Blackstone. And I remember this whole thing. And I'm thinking in my head, if they're getting a loan from Blackstone, this deal is falling through. This is not going to happen. They need something to back this. And I was like, I'm out. With all, the with all the leads that I was losing and all the referrals and all the roof leaks that were happening. And there was these crazy rumors that, of these things called red lines, which nobody knew about. Like they didn't exist back then. Some crazy came to us is like, yeah, but you guys could make anywhere between $1,200 to $2,000 a kilowatt. And we were like, you are crazy. Get out of here. I'm like, no, we get paid $175 a kilowatt with the best company in the whole country. And we bleed orange, right? Like don't mess with us. We're Vivint. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, sure enough, my buddy, Ben, he, he listened. He's like, well, in his Ben Mac voice, it looks, sounds like this. Well, <laughs> if it's worth 30 minutes of my time, it's not like I'm losing much. It's just 30 minutes. And if it pans out, then I got, it was a good investment. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, I work for Vivint. You go ahead. And so he went and sure enough, uh, he left Vivint. And a month later I did. Where did you go? He started to build a company called Burmax, which is an installation company. And I decided to, I'm like, I can recruit like crazy. I'll just, I'll build I'll build a sales team and I will go to a, a contractor and uh, give the, get a red line from them. Uh, no one called it a red line because it didn't really exist back then. A lot of people say that I was the founder of this, of this red line model, of this sales org model. I wasn't. I stole, it. I stole that idea from a guy named Rob Cassell and I appreciate him so much. I actually had him speak at SolarCon. Yeah. And, um, I mean the man, smart guy. he was smart, was a super smart guy. The processes, and systems he built, I ended up working with him for a couple of months after I left before I started Helio gold, but I saw the model and I was like, why don't I just do this? And, and, you know, I did broke off, did it, built a massive team and, uh, did this model. 
And some, that's how I got in good with SunPower and some of these other companies because this model didn't exist. I remember I got a portal from SunPower from one dealer and they turned down a job and it was like a metal roof or something. We don't do them. I'm like, no way. And there was another SunPower dealer. I'm like, how did you get that on the metal roof? And they're like, oh, we do metal roofs. I'm like, what? No, you can't do metal roofs and solar. You can't do that. And they're like, no, we, no, we did. It passed inspection. It was all good. We can do it for you. I'm like, oh. So I got a, I got a portal from them. And I, I remember I had two separate laptops for whatever reason. I, don't, I, I can't remember why I did this, but one portal was, one laptop was logged into one company. And I built this design out, typed in the address, built this whole design, got the proposal ready. And I remember the monthly payment was somewhere around like 175 bucks a month. And I was like, sweet. And then I went and then I went and did something and I came back and uh, the, both computers were off because I was gone long enough to where the screens were black. And I'm like, oh, shit, I need to print this thing out. So I had a little home office with a printer. <laughs> so I went to the computer, I opened it back up, went into the SunPower portal and it wasn't there. I was like, how does a, an account just go missing that I created? So I recreated the address, recreated the shade report, recreated the proposal, and it came back to $159 a month. And I was like, I checked the numbers for like an hour. I'm like, it was 175, what did I do different, right? And then, and I was like, wait a minute, this is, no, I did it on that laptop. So I opened that laptop up and that's when I realized, that's when I found out that the portals have their own algorithms and depending on what dealer you are, you get different red lines for the same exact product. And so I took it to this company, I'm like, did you know that I could sell it cheaper through this company than you? And he lost his mind because he was with SunPower for 10 years and Ben, the other portal that I had with Burmax, I was only in business for three months and they had better pricing than the guy for 10 years. So the guy for 10 years, uh, he shut down, his, it's still shut down. You can still see on the freeway when you pass it, the signs that got taken off, you still see the residue left behind on the building, Suncraft Solar. And uh, he shut it down. He's like, I've been with you guys for 10 years and these yahoos get better pricing than me. I'm out, I'm out. And, that, and SunPower flew down, the execs flew down to meet with me to find out who the hell exposed this, right? And this is how I got to meet most of the execs and now we're all friends, which is why SunPower and I have a pretty good relationship. It was, it was fun, it was great. Whatever happened to him? Did he come back? What did he do? No, he shut it down, he's done. I haven't heard from him since. <laughs> yeah. I think that's like a lot of people get tied to a red line and there's a lot of, I mean, we can go into that. We could talk about that all day, but um, you know, I, I, they, they don't know. And you were the first one to really talk to me about that, which is like, you need to have options because you don't know. Maybe if somebody says they can't install a metal roof and somebody else will, you're going to lose out on the money. And you, oh, you don't want to hurt that installer's feelings because you're putting deals into somebody else as like a sales work. Um, and you're right. Yeah. A lot. It's funny when I hear. In any other business, no matter what you do, when you sell something, there's always a, there's always the cost of goods, and then you make the profit on top. A red line isn't like some new like <laughs> thing. Like solar people and door to door people think that they're the only people with a red line. They're like, oh, yeah, I got to go. It's like you don't even know what you're talking about, dude. Every company has a red line. Yep. Every business everywhere. Um, so wholesale and retail, that's red lines, right? Literally. Yeah. And, and MSRP, right? Yeah. Um, and so you, you took, so after this little deal with Ben Mack, um, you know, I know that you flourished. So was it Helio Gold at the time? Was it already called Helio Gold? Helio Gold? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I built Helio Gold. I was, it was always called Helio Gold. Ben had this Burmax company and I was the primary source of volume through that. Ben just wanted to be done with the installation side. So he handed me off to his partner, Jay, and uh, I just kept putting volume through. And then eventually uh, parted ways and started the, started the um, multiple dealers, not just one. Started the multiple at a higher level. Uh, that's when I started to create you know, spreadsheets that gamified um, all of the data that we kept. We kept data of which company got through CADs faster, which company got the permits back faster, which company installed faster. And some crazy things happened when we started to gamify that data because we wanted it. I was so tired of the sales force coming to me and blaming my company and me and my operations and, my, and, and questioning my credibility because their projects were taking long. And so I decided to gamify the data and post it up there for them to see it. And I've talked with you about this post it up there for them to see it, to realize it's not me. And, and companies fluctuate. If you work with one organization, and just because they're a big one, I'm gonna use them as an example, but let's say you work with Titan, 
and in two weeks they're installing projects in Las Vegas. Uh, but then for some reason, two or three months later, it's taking them a, a couple months. Like, why is this? Volume skyrockets for them because their job is to go out and recruit people and they don't want to hire new installers because they don't know if the volume is going to dip when Christmas comes, right? Like, why would you hire people just to fire them? So they push installation times out or, I mean, there's so many variables that could happen. And so I just posted the KPIs and, and my sales reps would look at the data and they would choose their installer based on whatever the project was. Uh, they, could, they could filter anything. Which company is the fastest with metal roofs? They would look and see, uh, they would filter, we'd filter the spreadsheet, metal roofs and the timelines of the companies and they would see which one did metal roofs faster or was more profitable or, you know, there's so many, there's so much data you can gamify and nobody has to be frustrated at your installers anymore because it's your choice, right? And so they get mad at these installers, right? They're pointing fingers and blaming at them and yelling at them. And I'm like, do you even, do you even know who you're yelling at? Do you even know, do you even know that maybe, maybe their installs, maybe their CADs come back in two days, but their installs take six weeks like to get to install. And another company might take four weeks to get to CAD, but their installs happen the next day. Like, do you even, are you, why are you mad at anything? Just, just calculate the data, just keep track, and then pick the company that works best with you and your style, right? No, you, you opened up my eyes a lot to that too, especially with like, you know, cause everyone's like, oh, we have seven day installs and five day installs. I'm like, people don't even know what they're talking about. I'm like, how long does it take for your homeowner to get to PTO? Like, how do you think you get referrals? Do you think you get referrals from fast installs or fast turn on? Are they getting turned on ever? Like, what do you, you know, and you really helped me with that too, because like, it's it, a lot of, even just sales reps are just ignorant to like, and I think how you're, how you come up in the industry and how you start and who your leadership is and the people that are talking to you is the most important thing. Cause a lot of these kids are coming in and they're like, I got the best red line. And then all they're going to do is jump from company to company, company going red line, red line, or red line and never get anything what they should. Whereas like a lot of these kids that are coming in and they're being told like the truth you can give them a high red line and it won't matter because they know what's worth it. And they know that like, Oh yeah, my stuff goes to install my homeowner. You know, I mean like, uh, yeah, I can go off you on get a tangent. It. So yeah. for you, what do you like you, you, you know, what I'm hearing is like when you came in, you didn't have, you didn't have good leadership. And I'm not saying that, you know, where you were, didn't present that, but then you thought to yourself, okay, whether that's that entrepreneurial spirit or whatever, I don't give a shit. I think it's just personality <laughs> types. You can't, you, you started helio gold and you're like, I can recruit. So what do you think for you? I mean, you're in, you're in a place you're not from, you're, you're pretty young, right? Mm -hmm. What was like your biggest asset to get people to come work with you? What do you think? Like, what, what, what do you think that was? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I don't know if I've ever had that question before, actually. Uh, I just, I would say that it's, it's my knowledge and, and drive, like, and paint this picture for people to understand that there's a different way. And I've, and I've said this in other things before I, and I train this in sales, right? If every other, if you're going up against competitors in your house, like if your homeowner's meeting with multiple competitors and they're all, they're all presenting it in one way, they're doing a one sit pitch, right? Why would you play that same game? You're putting yourself in the same exact game and let's call that game the NBA take your homeowners out of the NBA and show them what the NFL is, right? Because the NBA players cannot play NFL. We've learned this from, you know, LeBron James or whoever else has tried it. Uh, Michael Jordan couldn't play baseball. You can't, if your competitors are playing all the same game, play a different game with your homeowner. So I switched to a two sit close and I told the homeowners, I'm like, hey, there is no reason, <laughs> there's no reason to rush this. This is a 25 year contract. You should slow this down and do not sign anything the first day someone brings it to you because you need time to sleep on it and think about it. And there's all sorts of questions like, what if my roof leaks? You know what they're gonna tell you? If your roof leaks, we're the best company ever. Well, guess what? We're the best company too. Who's telling the truth, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like no, no need to rush a 25 year contract that's more expensive than your car. And when I'm burying this into their mind, that I'm immediately eliminating every single person that does a, a one sit close, right? I'm, I'm not playing that in that game anymore. And if they do a two sit close then I'll take them to a one sit, but I do not play the same game as everyone else. Uh, anyway, to get back to oh, it, yeah. uh, to answer your question, that's, that's how I recruit. I'm like, why are you, why are you doing it the way everyone's been doing it? Look at this, right? 
That's really powerful. And it changed my, m- m- the way I think about stuff too. And it's like, you know, especially when you told me that before, but also something I can say about you just from my perspective of knowing you is that, and you said it the other night at dinner, um, I, is, is literally like you're good at putting people where they need to be. And I think a lot of times leaders don't understand that or people that own companies or, I mean, I mean, you need to be the owner, but just somebody that's in a position. And, and we talked about this of, of our job as, as, as reps to, to managers, to vice presidents, to owners is to, is to build leaders, is to find people and build a leader out of them. And the, the word might be cliche, but it's true. And what you told me is that like, you know where to put people. So you know how to take somebody and know where they fit. And I think that's an attribute that a lot of people don't, they don't, they don't think about or understand is that like, if you see somebody and you're like, dude, this guy's not a, he can't go on the home and settle, but he's an ace door knocker. I mean, the guy's a savage, which we've agreed that's the most important aspect and the industry's totally ruined that and made closer to <laughs> one person. Right. But you know, this guy's good at generating leads, but he might not be the best leader. Well, how can I make him that? Because he's really good at this job. And, I, and I've been thinking about that a lot since we talked about, and I, I was thinking about that with you because that's really important too, is like, you know, it's a, that's a really good quality. So as he will go, how, how, how big did you guys get? You know, how, cause I know you sold it. So how long were you guys in business and, um, you know, what did that look like? I started it in 2016 and, uh, you know, it wasn't easy. It was grinding. I, I didn't have any money. I was broke out of my mind. Um, I'm still missing a tooth. I don't know if I told you that. Still missing a tooth because I was so broke I couldn't go to the dentist. And I keep it now, or I kept it out now <laughs> to remind me. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, and it's like, hey, like, I, I struggled. And so when other people are struggling, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't look down on them for it. I, I should be like, holy crap, like, I was there. I, and, I, and it, oh my gosh, it sends chills through me right now. Like, I was there where you are. Like, let me help you. I have been there. And it comes from a place of empathy and understanding rather than like, hey, you know what? You're not working hard enough. Get out. Sometimes people, sometimes people are like these abused dogs, you know, like they're, they've just been beat down by every single recruiter and every single company. And they just need a little bit of love and attention and edification, like you're talking about, to make them feel good about what their strengths are. And, and if someone had done that to me, I would have loved it. The only person that did that to me uh, was this Asian lady I had never met. I was broke. I couldn't afford anything. My fiance left me, right? I, I was borrowing money from her. She, God bless her, man. I wouldn't be here without her either. But, um, but she left me and she had $3,000 left in her bank account after I depleted everything. <laughs> you know, I was just a disaster of a guy. Like, um, the home security thing, I tried it in 2013 and then I just, I, I hit a wall and I just stopped. I, and I didn't say this, but I started Helio Gold in 2016, but there was a two year gap where I just didn't work, right? Ran up my credit cards, became completely broke, started borrowing money from her. And, um, she was down to her last $3,000. She'd had enough and she left. And, uh, so I was like, I, I told her, I want to start a company. If you give me half of it, I'll build a company. She had no reason to believe me and I don't blame her for it. Uh, she left and the house that I was renting at the time, I called up this lady. I'd never met her. Her name's Michelle. I don't know. She's so Asian though. Um, she had the accent and everything. I said, Michelle, I can't pay you rent, but I'm, I'm starting a business and hopefully, and she said, okay, it's okay. You don't pay me rent. You don't pay me six months, six months. You pay me. I trust you. Hey, I have to go. Okay. Bye. And I was like, what? Anyway, four months later, I wrote her a check for everything. Um, and that's when I started Helio Gold. Like sometimes people just get beat down so badly. They just need a little bit of help. They just need a, they just need someone that believes in them for no reason at all. And I think you can get great things out of people that way. Wow. Yeah, I think, and that's the thing I try to tell a lot of people I work with too. It's like, I've been, dude, I've been there, oh, dude, where I'm like calling my girl, I'm like, babe, I don't have the rent, like, I don't have the mortgage, like, yeah. I pay it, like, it's, when I started the roofing thing, dude, I, <laughs> for broke, broke, dude, and, you know, I was learning how to do insurance claims, and I couldn't figure it out, and, like, you know, you don't get paid on that so much for 90 days, because you got to call on the claim, and then you got to get them out, and it's a whole situation, and, like, I was like, no, we're going to make this work, it took me 90 days to get it started, so we're six months in, and I'm like, babe, I'm, I'm literally negative a lot of money right now in the bank account. You know, so I, I've been there and you're right. And only certain times where people bet on you 
and then you got to bet on yourself. And I think that's the thing with door to door solar. It doesn't matter what it is. People forget that like, oh, I'm going to do it for a couple months and then I'm out. Like maybe I'll do it for six months. And we had like uh, our, our, the most reps we had was like 58 reps. So, and we had, we had three cancellations the entire year of 2019, three total. Because I taught reps how to filter it out in the beginning. Like, don't don't let them cancel on you. Like, like bring all their objections and fears out early, and allow them to cancel on you before you submit for, for designs and all this other stuff. Three? We had three cancellations. Two of them were deaths, and one was a true cancel. I'm gonna have to call Ben and get the actual <laughs> numbers here. I'm gonna call Ben Mac and get the truth. Ben, Ben, actually, I would argue that Ben has even less cancels than that. Yeah, I, if he has any. The, the man's incredible. I've learned most, all of my sales career from him. So, yeah. He's like the most like under, <laughs> nobody knows him. Yeah, because he doesn't care. He like, doesn't give a shit. <laughs> 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 Everyone in the industry is like, got to get these awards and get their picture up on the television. And even me, like I have, you, guys, you can't see, I have a camera guy with me following me around everywhere. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate it. But like, I, like everyone, Ben is like, hey, I just, wanna, I just wanna make money and go with my family. It's just another job. Like there's no difference if I work at Best Buy or if I work at Olive Garden or if I, if I do solar, like it's a job. I'm like quit living that as a life. Well, it's funny when I met, you had told me about him and, and, and part of some of our conversations that we were having, you used him as a reference and I was like, who is this guy? And you were telling me how many bills he was doing. I was like, yeah, right, like by himself, <laughs> no way. You know, in San Diego nonetheless, not like, you know, you see some of these guys that are not, and you know, listen, if guys are doing 130, 200 deals a year, my hat's off to you. Uh, but they're doing it in markets where it's like laid out, which is smart. So Vivint did. It's how they got huge is they went to places where nobody else was, right? Blue ocean market theory. But when you're doing those numbers in San Diego, when guys are seeing five to seven bids at a time, and then I saw, and then he was just, I was leaving SolarCon, he was just standing there. <laughs> and I was like, are you Ben Mack, bro? And he was like, yeah. I'm like, and then he's just the nicest, I mean, like, one of the nicest guys, I'm like, well, Jake's told me so much about you, would love to get you on the podcast. guys. He's like, yeah, man, I, that'd be great, you know? <laughs> and then I was just talking, and he's just the night, and I was like, and I was talking about something, he's like, it's just the best for my people, it's the best referral, I know they're going to do a good install. They're a little bit more expensive, but I don't have to worry about anything. And I just, the way he thought about solar, even in just that small conversation, I was like, that's the kind of people I want to be around, because yeah. it's like, an, he's an, you guys are, I mean, OGs, you've been in the industry a while. But he's just, it's the same with you. Like just this mindset of just like, I don't give a shit, man. You know, here's a good deal. Even the way that you present in the home, that intro, the way you talk <laughs> about, like give me the good, the bad, and the ugly. I'm just here to be your friend. Or a lot of times we're teaching reps how to just sell when it's like, bro, just be yourself and just be honest and be trustworthy yeah. and just show up and be, don't like lie about their average bill. Let them figure out their power bill. Yep. Don't bullshit the numbers. You can make a lot of money still, don't worry. So let me get back to the point, but you know, again, uh, you're in this thing with Helio, but you guys blow up. You're, you're doing, you know, a lot. You're doing a lot. There's not a lot of people doing that much back then, and it's in San Diego. How did you figure out the back end to be so good that you could go from from five reps to that many reps and go from that kind of volume? How, how did you figure that out? I, I didn't actually. I just kept doing everything I was doing. Like nothing, nothing changed. Um, I just kept, I just kept working the same way. All of a sudden, you know, just oh, you know what? I do remember what happened. We hired, we hired this uh, this amazing, talented woman. Her name's Amy, and she took, she took, uh, and this is this is a good lesson for everyone listening. She took over the administrative side of things, pushing projects through, answering phone calls, emails from homeowners, like stuff like that, right? Uh, creating proposals. I paid her. I remember I paid her a penny a watt. Uh, to, to answer sales reps calls because we generated the proposals for them and I was like even if you're at dinner and you, and you sell it you just made a hundred bucks right like just stand up for 10 minutes answer the phone do the thing be done shut your laptop go back to dinner with your friends and she really bought into this concept well the lesson I learned was uh, bringing her in for the pay that she wanted and even giving her a little more to entice her to, to work during the hours she didn't want to freed up my time so much that I had nothing left to do but recruit, right? But to go sell and but, you know, and, and it's like, holy crap, I just learned this lesson. Paying someone, I have to ask myself, and, and you know, I can't remember where I read this from, but I have to ask myself if me, uh, how do I word this? Paying her 
if I paid her 20 bucks an hour or 30, I can't remember what I paid her. If I pay her 20 or 30 bucks an hour, can I make more money in that hour than, than paying her 20 or $30? And what you said earlier, can I bet on myself? Do I bet on myself to make more money in that hour than what it would cost me for her? Even if it's a dollar more, I'm making money, right? And so the question is, am I going to make more money? Am I capable of doing it? Well, sure enough, I give her 20 or 30 bucks an hour, and then I'm going out and generating a couple thousand in, in that hour, right? Or a new recruit, and that new recruit is bringing me tens of thousands of dollars. Or I go out and recruit a team, all because I got to step away from that side of the business for a week to go recruit an entire team over to the company, and all it costs me was an hourly wage with someone that was fully capable of doing it. I just had to put that effort in to find them and trust that if I paid her, and remember, I only had five sales reps, right? Still got overhead in the company, I had an office. And so if I paid her, it's like taking all my profits and margins away, it was scary, right? But, but then it freed me up to go make more. And if you don't believe that you're worth more money than hiring someone, then you shouldn't be a business owner. You shouldn't be doing any of that stuff because you've got to believe that your time is more valuable than anyone else's in your company, otherwise you will never grow. A lot of people are gonna to love to hear that. Especially, you know, I, it blows my mind. Like I know kids that are doing 40, 50 deals a month, man, and some of these, you know, I don't know how many going to install, but they're selling that many. And I'm like, do you have like a personal assistant or something? Like, do you have like any, like, I'm like, bro, you need somebody to help you. Because when you do, you're gonna get, referrals are so much better than going out eight hours a day knocking doors. I don't give a shit what anybody says, dude. I'd rather sit at home and wait for people to call me and then just drive to their house. Yeah. Just be like, here's, you know, I have to sell them. Oh, your friend got it, you trust it, there you go, bro. I'm like, that's <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's really how they should be. Um, did, have, did, have you had any help along the way with Hilo Go? Like, did you have any coaching? Like, who, who, whose ear did you get to bend? I mean, you know, now you have this girl that you've hired who's helping you and you're doing what you're good at. Obviously, you're even better at the back end, but did you have any mentorship or anything like that during this time? Yeah, I mean, I had a unique type of mentorship because I was an early adopter into this sales org thing. Uh, I got to be exposed to stuff that most people in the industry won't be exposed to today, right? So I got to go into CED Green Tech because the installers were like, yeah, Jake's coming in here, and I got to go in and you know, roam around and hang out in the offices and ask them questions like, well, what, what panel gets returned the most? What's your favorite? Why? Right. And they'll answer some of these things today, but I got like a free backstage pass to all of the businesses because I didn't exist yet. There's, there's no sales orgs like there are today. They're like, so what do you do in solar? Well, I own my own business, but, um, I can use any installer I want. Really? Yeah. I can use you. Do you want, do you want any accounts to go through you? They're like, wait a minute. I, I don't, I have sales reps that I pay W2 and I have to, I have all this overhead and phone calls and pay for leads and you know, and the list goes on forever. Uh, uh, payroll taxes, like all sorts of stuff. And you'll just put jobs through me. Uh huh. Yeah. I just want a lower, I, I just want what price do you need for me to do it? And I'll do it. And so when I came to this with them uh, and a lot of people hadn't heard of it this time, most of the guys have been in for 10 years will tell you like, this is not, this was not prevalent at that time. When I did that, they would open up their computers to me. They'd be like, yeah, this is how this works. And then they would let me go into jobs and go on installs. And I got to ride in trucks and I got to help in the warehouses. And I was, I enjoyed, I enjoyed going there at five in the morning and, and putting the pallet together of all of the panels and all the equipment they would need and opening up the cage and getting the drills and the belts and everything, getting the yellow, the green wiring, all the copper spool. Like I enjoyed doing that. And then I learned how to do inventory in warehouses. And I learned what that meant. I learned what it meant to have a cage and a warehouse manager. And, and, you know, and then I got to dive into SunPower. And I, we flew out to SunPower and spent a whole bunch of time there. And they showed us the inner workings of SunPower. Like, I got, I've, I've had unique experiences in the industry that most probably will never have simply because I was early in it. And they didn't know to protect certain things, right? And that's kind of what we, when we started talking to, even this year, about you know electrical and you know um because i was under the mindset for a long time and there's probably going to be plenty of people listening to this episode they're going <laughs> to write me and say that i'm full of shit because they love doing that but i just sold the deal i knew enough to be dangerous and i could sound good and i get the homeowner to say yes and i'm pretty persuasive and then you're challenging me like do you even know when you actually need an mpu do you even really know <laughs> like do you know how to calculate it and i'm like well no do you, do you know what backfeed is? Well, no. And I'm like, I just kind of guess, you know? 
And you're like, well, what if this, and I'm, and you start, and then, you know, and I think, you know, that knowledge and that I've passed on to my reps and now what starts to happen in the home is they don't get more quotes out here for us. We're not getting second or third quotes. They're not outbidding us. Like if we're the first one in the door and we come in with that mindset and we explain to them why we do what we do and then how our competitors aren't going to do that for you. And I'm not putting anybody down, but they're just not going to know. We're talking about doing 60 to a hundred thousand dollar investment on their home. Right. I and mean, we sell a lot of loans. You guys were a lot of lease and PPA, right? And you're going to go in and tell a homeowner like kind of the bare minimum of 15 or 20 minutes, they're just going to bail. And so I think that's a big asset too. So what, when did you start Solar Academy? Because obviously all of this time really prepped you for that. And then why did you start it? Yeah, good question. So we had been flourishing in, in Helio Gold. When I say we, Ben's going to come up a lot in my career. I love Ben. Uh, ben, <laughs> ben and I have been Which friends. <laughs> Ben and I have been friends for so long and we just, even in business, even in family, like kids, like surfing, you know, like everything, we just, everything that we're into, like we just, he was just texting me the other night about stories from three years ago. Like we, we just, we will just always be friends for life. Right. I love that. And if I get into something uh, and he's doing something else, eventually he'll grab it. If I'm still doing it, he'll gravitate to me or I gravitate to him. And so we were both doing Helio Gold and we sat down with our CPA and he was like, hey, so you guys made this much money? And we were like, holy shit. And it was like 1.2 million. And I was like, oh man, each. And, yeah. uh, good and Ben was like, huh, how much should we spend on all these parties and, and you know, the um, whining and dining, these reps? We found out it, it truly was, and it's not always the case. I know we've all read the book, but we found out this, it truly was the 80-20 rule. 80% of the money that we were spending on parties and recruiting and iPads and incentives and motorcycles all went to 20% uh, of the production. The reason that 20% was staying with us was because they were getting these things and they were having the parties and the lifestyle, but it cost us that much money to keep them there. And then 20% of the volume was producing 80 or 20% of the reps were producing 80% of our volume over and over and over. We broke it down by months, or, or CPA did. We had an in-house CPA. He broke it down for us and he showed us these numbers. And the people that were, that were selling the most did not show up to our parties, to our backyard barbecues and, and incentives and trips because they had lives. They were living, they had kids. Like why, why would I go where there's music playing with a barbecue and a, and a big water slide in the back? Why would I do that? I would rather be with my family, right? Or I'd rather be vacationing or I'd rather like they had their own lives. And so Ben and I looked at this and we were just like, why are we doing this with this other 80%? And this is going to blow people's minds. There's more to the story, but I'm going to say this. We shut the company down. We, we just decided we, we walked out of that meeting with our CPA in the back office. And it was right when we were having a full company meeting, we split them into teams and they'd meet on different days. But once a month we met with everyone together and it just ha so happened to be that day. And we were just, we had just gotten back from a conference and I have to tell you that story. And we came out and we said, guys, we we're done. And no sales rep has ever heard that probably. And I go, okay, okay, okay. Um, so we still have accounts and we're going to put them through you though, right? No, no, you can put them through anyone you want. We're done. And they were like, uh, well, I have to, could I just put two more through you? We're done. <laughs> like, it was like that. And they're like, well, where do we go? And that's when it started to like pull on my heartstrings a little bit. They're like, well, where do we go? What do we do? And because I had been, I, if you guys have watched the movie Forrest Gump when he's running, <laughs> and he's got these people following him and it's all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden he stops. And like, well, what do we do? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where I was like, oh man, like we're letting people down, right? <laughs> David, you gotta cut that, put that in the clip. What do you do this later? <laughs> it's what it, like, we didn't realize the repercussions. We didn't even realize how much momentum we had. Wow. We didn't realize like how much these people relied on us. That was a massive lesson for me. We can't, you have responsibility as a company not just to like stay in business and do good quality, but if you convince people to follow you and you have a massive amount of momentum, wow. you can't just cut them off and like let them float past you and fall down to their death. <laughs> like you have a responsibility and I learned that lesson there, right? 
But to answer your question, uh, Ben, he was like, he was like, what are you doing? I had just gotten back from Switzerland or something. And he was like, what are you doing? We're going to San Francisco. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to San Francisco. What are we doing though? And he was like, we're going to go party. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go. <laughs> He's like, no, I got us tickets. I'm like, tickets to what, Ben? Because he knows, this is going to be ironic, he knows that I hate conferences. I hate them. And so he's like, Very it is ironic. And so he was like, dude, I didn't want to tell you. I bought these two tickets. They were 1200 bucks each. I don't want it to be a waste. I got it for me and you. Let's fly to San Francisco and just, I'm like, you know what, Ben? Fine, fine. But I'm going to turn this into, I rented a convertible Maserati. I, I got us the nicest Airbnb. I'm like, I'm going to have fun. I don't give a shit what you say. Like, <laughs> I fucking hate conferences. And so I'm, I'm rolling around and then like having fun and he's meaning it. To, and I didn't, I get in there and I'm like, Hey, I'm going to listen to these two people speak. Um, and he, and these guys get up on stage and they're going to teach us how to build a business. And then they have everyone raise their hands. Like, put your hand down. If you've made 10,000 or less than 10,000 this year, most people's hands are up. You see some going down. If you've made less than two, 20,000, 50,000, hundred thousand, Ben and I are hands. We were the last ones up right? We, each of us made 1.2 so far this year. And so we, he's like, wow, good job guys. So we put our hands down, right? This guy on stage is going to try to tell us, I'm a little cocky shit at the time, how to run a business. And we were making millions of dollars, right? And uh, so I was like, I was sitting back like a cocky guy. And then he goes over some slides and stuff. And I go to, I'm like, okay, that was pretty good. I write that down. Ah, that's pretty good too. And I write that down. And I'm like, this guy's just doing the sales thing. Like he's just building the value and he's gonna drop the price on us. Like this is an entire three day sales pitch. He's walking around touching people's shoulders and like looking them in the eyes. And I'm like, dude, come on, this is the sales. Okay, that was pretty good. And I write this down. And then I started writing down some of the sales tactics, the way he spoke, inflection as a voice, all of this stuff. And I'm like, this guy's a damn genius, but I'm not buying his shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can do all of this. I'm writing it down. I can bust that out too. Pretty soon it got to the point. I remember the end of the first day, my hand was so tired. I was so tired of writing. Like I was rubbing my hand so I could write some more. And I was like, holy shit, man. Like I, and I was like, I, we, I can do all of this. I can do it all. I can build all of this stuff. And, and I took photos of everything and I'm like, I can build this. I wanted, and I want to do this. I don't want to do solar or helio gold anymore. I want to do this. I want to get in front of stages and people and I want to sell hundred thousand dollar packages like this guy. And day two comes, I start writing it down and he, and he drops, he's like, okay, so, um, if you want to hire us, I didn't know it was a hundred thousand at the time. He's like, if you want to hire us, uh, it starts at 20 grand. I'm like this fucking guy. And then, then, but then another, the another package is 50 grand. And we barely ever do this. Uh, we only take on two clients. He's like limited it, right? And he's fucking, I, I know that sales tactic too. Um, hey, we, only take, <laughs> we only take two people. I did not use it on you. <laughs> and he's like, but we only take two people, but it's a hundred grand. I'm like, Ben, this guy's a hundred thousand dollars. He's outside of his mind. This guy's crazy, right? Let's hire him. <laughs> so we ended up, we ended up hiring him. That's when we flew back and sat with the CPA and I'd already had it in my mind that I'm going to do these stages and train people and educate and wow. teach them how to build like we did. And, and, uh, and that's when we shut it down. I was like, Ben, let's just do this instead. I bought the domain, the solar Academy, it was available and, you know, started building the site. Uh, we dropped Helio gold. It went dead. COVID started. So we had our first event, all the tickets sold where we're going to get on stage and do exactly what this guy did with us for a hundred grand. It sold. We sold out the tickets and then we had to reimburse them all. Cause that's when COVID shut everything down. Wow. We're like, no. And then, and then COVID starts going. And then all of a sudden a mentor pops up another mentor, boop, another mentor, all these guys in solar and home security, that have been, uh, they've seen the most minute amount of success, all of a sudden are mentors now because what else are they gonna do? If they have a computer at home with a camera, all of a sudden they're a mentor. We had the idea first. Now there's 100,000 mentors in solar, right? Power even calls a, a rookie sales rep that has three accounts a mentor, right? Like, shit, how do we separate ourselves? And it was just difficult. It's been difficult. Um, but that's, that is how the Solar Academy started. Well, I love it. Dude. I love it. And then from the Solar Academy, which, you know, shout out to the Solar Academy, which I know is kind of taking on new footing and it's growing and, and you could touch on that for a little bit, but, 
Um, you guys have gone from that to then SolarCon, and you know the irony of what you just said is true. But um, what kind of gave you the uh, the mindset for SolarCon, and why why did you guys do that? Uh, I was at RoofCon. Um, let's see. I, I had purchased a booth at RoofCon for the Solar Academy. I knew that roofers were trying to get into solar. And so I thought, wow, what a, what a perfect place. You know, I have all these yahoos that are mentors now. What a perfect place for me to separate and distinguish myself going to the roofing industry. So I go to the roofing side and I buy this booth, 10 by 10 booth for like five grand at the time. And Danny Passy was like, you got a booth? Can I come? I'm like, absolutely, let's share it, right? And because yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love Pass. And, uh, and so he comes, he's always seen value in me, right? Uh, he sees value in everybody. So yeah, definitely a shout out to him. And even though I'm kind of a competitor to him, he's like, no, no, bro, you're not a competitor. Not at all. We build each other up. That's what we do. This is, and, and it just, this energy that he brought. And I was like, wow, what an incredible guy. Yeah. So, um, so we're at RoofCon and Jonah, I had met him at the Knockstar event. Uh, this long haired, like Jason Momoa haired style, like guy, like <laughs> comes up and he's like, Hey, uh, why don't we start SolarCon? I'm like, okay. Yeah. He's like, RoofCon, look at this. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty cool. He's like, we should start SolarCon. I'm like, yeah, I, fuck it. I don't know. I, I have enough time. Let's do it. Right. And so we decided to start it right then and there. But the reason I, <laughs> uh, it was Jonah, it was Jonah's idea. We were, we were just standing, standing in the vendor area and it was Jonah's idea. And, um, I've kind of become the face of it, but he is, he is the original idea. Um, and he is still an owner, right? So is solar Joe and, and then eventually Lindsay, um, my, my good friend, Neil built all of the marketing, but he opted out of SolarCon. Um, when we sell, we owe him, you know, I'm not just going to be like, Hey, thanks. Bye. <laughs> you know, he helped us build it. Uh, but he, he foregoes ownership in it. And then we gave some to Lindsay because she's one of the most phenomenal event throwers I've ever seen. Tremendous value. And that's how we formed the team. But, um, the reason I decided to build a conference at that time was because of how much the conference I went to changed my life. And I didn't, I didn't think it would. I, I like, and I wanted to make this conference educational based. A lot of people try to go up and sell their stuff and you get people promoting their brands or promoting themselves. No, if I'm doing the solar industry, I'm going to do it like the solar Academy. I'm going to unify all of these people because people bash on sun power, but they don't know it as well as I know it. Right. People bash on Titan or they bash on uh, the mom and pop shops that they use. They, they just bash, they bash on red lines. They bash on dealer fees. They have no clue what they're even bashing on. And, I, and that's when I realized like the industry has never all been under one roof for people to see each other. When I was doing the Solar Academy, I was, I was in Colorado and I was hanging out with this company that hired me and they were talking shit about another company across the country. I'm like, no way. I was just with them. They were like the coolest people. Like I would trust my kids with them. Like they were that good of people. And you're saying that he's a dick. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, but have you met him? I'm like, no. I'm like, I promise you, if you met him, you guys would be best friends. You guys are identical. I'm like, really? And that's when I was like, why wow, is this happening? How is this happening across the whole country? So I wanted to build something where we could get everyone under one roof and just meet each other and heal this industry. We already know that there's no regulation and, you know, yada, yada, yada. This brand is better than that brand and the F this company and I hate that owner. But have you met them, Right. And so if we get them under one roof, and I think that's why SolarCon took off, because for the first time, people got to meet all of these people, just like you met Ben Mac. People got to meet all of these people and they were so inspired that there was no more, there was no more like posturing and there was no more competition. Like we are unified in the solar industry and you're finally meeting this person face to face and that changes everything, right? And that, that was the vision behind it and, it and it ended up working really well. I feel like people connected in the industry in a way they never have before. Yeah, I, I really powerful, and I completely agree. Especially because you, you're correct me if I'm wrong, but it wasn't about like, and you had your coach there, and, and there was a lot of inspirational people there. But it wasn't about like I'm going to get big, which there's nothing wrong with that either. Uh, oh, I'm going to get big name speakers, and it's 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 like no, it's going to be about solar, and it's going to be you're you're going to learn how to 
how to sell solar. You're going to learn different sides of solar, virtual solar here from door docking panel, leadership panel, battery panel, inverter, stuff that some people just don't even, even owners of companies still don't even know to this day right. because you want to add that value. And I think even, you know, you let SunPower have a booth and you let, you know, and there was just stuff that I, that I even for myself was just really powerful and that you don't get at a lot of these other conventions where it's like either it's like a, you don't want to send your rep there because it's like a recruiting fest or a this fest or that fest. And I think you guys accomplished exactly what you wanted um, in the time frame that you did it. And it's one of the best in our industry looking. I mean, even your first year, it was like, I mean, I'm, I'm an old production guy. Uh -huh. You know, my buddy Chase is here. Like I worked in production forever and toured and sold hundred thousand dollar consoles and you know did a bunch of cool shit and so when i go to a product you know i go to a conference i'm just like oh this blows i'm like these guys don't even know what they're doing <laughs> oh, here we go again I'm like you don't need 5k project the 4k per but why don't you just get some video walls you loot you know and i just didn't, <laughs> didn't have that there so that that for me was good that's my own personal thing but i think even what you're talking about like which SolarCon blew up and, and you lied to us. You said it was going to be in San Diego, but it's going to be in Salt Lake City. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. Give you a hard time I have a reason for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the vendor, like Everett Brewer from Stores Power had one of the sexiest booths we've seen in the solar industry so far, right? Uh, it, it definitely raised the level that all of these other vendors are going to come to SolarCon 2 with. But his booth, he said it costs about 12 to 16 grand to install it, I can't remember, to have them come in and do the labor. But in San Diego, that same one would have been $60,000 because they, we have to use union workers at their rates. And we can't control it because the conference centers uh, have contracts, right? And so if we move the venue, we couldn't do Arizona because the Super Bowl is gonna be there and it pushed every conference forward or backward around it. And so that was completely booked. Um, Washington was out of the way, like Texas was good, except, um, something happened with that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but, uh, we were left with Salt Lake again, but you know what? We decided, okay, we've already done that. So how can we, how can we challenge ourselves a little bit? And so we're changing some of the way the operations run in a conference and we're, we're, it's, it's just my style. I don't like to play the same game as everyone else. If everyone's going this way, I'm going to go this way. So we're changing the way onboarding is happening with vendors. We're changing, we're turning it fully automated, right? Um, which was a task. Uh, we tripled the size of the venue. So if you went to SolarCon 1, you should know that this, this April, it's going to be literally three times the space. Uh, we were going from 71 vendors to 208 vendors. We went from 1,700 um, attendees. We're going to 5,000. We only did residential sales for, for on the solar side. Now we're bringing in the installation piece, right? Uh, we're, we're, we, I just met with the Cirque du Soleil um, stage manager for Ka and Miss Dare. And this is literally right before I came here to your house. And we're going to throw on a two, three hundred thousand dollar production for the first five minutes of SolarCon, <laughs> like just to set the tone of what the theme is for the whole thing. I mean, we are going all out. I am not promising this right now, and I almost don't want to say it, but we are in negotiations with Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, I just left Bradley's office this morning. Like, I know that in the first year, we only had people in the industry. Uh, come and speak and we are going to have that same thing. We're going to have people in the industry come and speak. The people that make the businesses and the brands that we're selling on a day-to-day -day basis. Guys like you that bring tremendous value to the industry. We're going to have you guys there and we want you guys there. But there's also an element to it or a side to it where you've got to have that wow factor, that pizzazz, right? And so, and so we're bringing that as well. It's pretty baller. I mean, it's like no bad deal. Leonardo DiCaprio, I don't know about that. That might not fit, you know, too well. I mean, he's a green energy nut, but you know, yeah. I can't really see where. No, I'm just kidding. That's that's incredible, man. And I and I think even it, it's cool too. Even the culture that you guys bring, like Solar Joe. I mean, like who's like the nicest guy ever. Ever. Like nobody wants. I mean, like ever. I, he's always in a good <laughs> mood. I mean, I could probably ask David. I mean, he's his brother, but like. Is the guy ever in a bad mood? Like he's David, just the nicest guy. Is he ever in a bad mood? No, yeah. he's never in a bad mood. Ne I have never, in all the years, I've never seen I'm him in like, a bad mood. I remember when I first met you two, and I looked at him and I was like, you know, I'm like, what are you, these, you guys don't fit. When you, on face value, you're like, this doesn't really work. Cause you're like, you know, so a little bit reserved when you first meet you and Joe's yeah. just like, 
happy as shit, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. And just like down and talk to you about whatever, and just in a good mood. And, uh, you know, and I think what you guys are, that can, even the online community of like, hey man, like we're going to build these Facebook groups and you guys are allowed to talk about whatever you want. And then we're going to ask questions and come here for, for, for free. It's free. I mean, reps can literally go on the Facebook groups and if they're, their companies are leadership or mentors or managers or whatever, they can get all the info there. We're not to pay anything for it. Right. Um, so I think that what, like what you're saying is huge, especially for the industry because the industry is in its infancy. I don't care what anybody says. A lot of people are always like, oh, bro, the commissions aren't going to be as good. And, uh, I'm like, <laughs> Bro, so, there's so much money. It's un, it's un, and even the value. I love when you hop on because it, it at, I, even when I go to even when I go to one of my installers and I'm like, hey, I'm like, I throw in a little like, hey, uh, interested. How did you know that? How did you know the dude was going? You know, because I'm like, <laughs> you know, I talk to certain people, you know, because I want to know too. But you know, like you were saying, even with the M1, M2 payments and the oh, interest yeah. rates going up and be prepared. Just be prepared. I was doing a training here on Thursday with my reps. It's like, hey. If the interest rates go to 5%, who cares? Who cares? Yeah. We're going to give good value. Hey, we, we're, gonna good, we're not going to be afraid of this increase of... Because even at the 2%, 3% interest rate we're right now, homeowners don't give a shit. Yeah. They're not even questioning us. They're just <laughs> signing the dock. And I'm not fighting for a 1% interest rate, 2% interest rate with Goodleap or whoever to try to... It's just like, we'll just take what we get right now. And so... Just so I can, just so before, because I know you got to be somewhere and everyone's always got to, you know, you're in town, you got to go, you know. Uh, <laughs> what, Please fill in the how do, how do people, uh, how do people get a hold of Solar Academy? Where do they find it? Uh, you know, uh, I know, you're, thank you for the shout out. We're, we're actually, we're actually like busy we're really busy and and i could have grown the solar academy and delegated and had other mentors and stuff um but i wanted to be the one to train people I, it's, it's a passion that i have I, I like to help educate people and like to help elevate them that's the only reason i got into it because i feel like i can help them and so we're not you can go to the website and fill out the forms and all of that like we have videos you can purchase like a video library and trainings and um, but I, I really am only helping the people that are reaching out a lot. Like this guy, Mike Moline, um, he was the only one that was like, Hey man, um, I really just want to, I just really want to be part of your program. I just really, and he just kept asking, right? I was like, you know what? I would sell these hundred thousand dollar packages to these businesses. And I, you know, I only charge him 20 grand and I'm helping him build his whole business because he just asked, you know? I, I just really, and I'm not going to do that for everyone. All you bitches out there, you pay me 300 grand. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's just when I see passion in someone, when I see, when I see that someone is genuine and they're not just doing it to be like, I want to be number one. I want to be the alpha. I want to like, I've, I've lived that. I've gone through all of that since 2005. You just heard it. I hit the wall. I'm done with it. I want to make a difference in people's lives. I want to help grow people. I want to teach them there's better ways. And so if someone is really genuine and, and sincere in wanting to do that and not be number one and grind and like if they really truly want to make a difference in their lives or the people following them and I really feel that, that's when I'll jump in and like be like, okay, I'll mentor you, right? So the Solar Academy was, and I built it to be, um, a platform that everyone should go to and, and we can help the masses. But now it's turning into more of a passion um, project, more of a passion like you if if we accept you and it's not even like even the dollar amount that we're concerned about it's just the, the i mean take solar joe right the happiest guy in the world and and it's just he has we're aligned like we just want to help people that appreciate it and that's all it is yeah and then you do the you know the trainings in general so it's it's perfect especially even like the zoom calls and all that stuff so you know i mean that hundred dollar boot camp for electrical i mean that's the three hours of your life that you need to invest in because and you can find all that stuff on the facebook groups um, so just DM me if you want it, cause most people usually will. And then the other thing is SolarCon. So when is SolarCon 2023? Uh, that is April 20th, 21st and 22nd. So it starts on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Cool. but we're doing something unique this year. Do we have, do I have time to tell you? Yeah. Say it? Uh, last and the first year we got all the best feedback, but we did get a negative comment and or two negative comments. The first negative one, uh, we had one person complain that this was not for effing installers, but I did advertise that it was. We had installers speaking, we had installers there. But 
he complained that it wasn't for installers. So now we're going to have an entire stage dedicated to installers this year. We have a fourth stage being built for installers. And um, the other feedback that we got was there's not enough separation between the platinum tickets and the other tickets. I agree with that. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, and so SolarCon is the 20th, 21st and 22nd, unless you're a platinum ticket holder, then you get to come on the 19th to the VIP room, which we've turned into more of a gala style. It's going to have a neon lit tree in the center of it. Uh, lights hanging down like you're in a nighttime star sky. It's going to look like uh, Avatar, the movie. Sick. Um, with, you know, it's going to be super high end. And anyone that's a platinum ticket holder uh, comes a day early in that room. And we're going to have two master classes, three hours long. We're going to have breaks in between and uh, a lunch for them. And the sponsor is going to talk to you about their product for just, I think it was like 30 minutes is all we're giving them. But the rest is for you to come in and get educated. The first training we're going to do is everything batteries. Everything you need to learn battery related from, from being a novice 101 to being a high-end expert. We're going to try and fit all we can in three hours and you will get the recordings on that battery training. The second training, we haven't decided what that masterclass is going to be yet. But this will differentiate the experience that the platinum ticket holders hold uh, this year compared to others. And it was not cheap. We did have to buy an entire other day of this conference and, you know, put all this stuff together. But I really, I really do appreciate and enjoy the feedback that we get because my objective is to make a difference. And if there wasn't enough differentiator, then we're going to do that now. <laughs> I love getting feedback and then running with it, dude. I respect that a lot. So. Uh, yeah, buy tickets because I'm going to be there uh, recording at a booth. Yeah, thank you for that, by the way. I'm stoked for you to be there. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm pumped because then I can just pull people over and just be like, dude, just talk for Oh, I can't come in, bro. You got to fly me in. And I'm like, well, here, mother, you know, <laughs> walk over to D55 or whatever. You know? So I, we appreciate, I appreciate you and I know a lot of people do so. Um, you know, thanks for coming out the time to come here today, dude. I've been having to pull your arm for a little bit. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm really grateful you came on here and I know a lot of a ton of value. So, um, yeah, man, I'll let you get out of here. Hey, thank you very much, Zach. I love doing stuff with you anytime.